Good morning, everyone. My name is Rosalie Rizzati, a parish office staff, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the St. Mary's Church in the Ipswich Catholic community to celebrate the life of Prof. Kenneth Sayer. Please ensure that your mobile is turned off or on silent mode during the service. If you require the bathroom, portable toilets are on the side at the back of the church. Please stand for the gathering hymn. everyone, my name is Stephen, I'm the parish priest here, uh, the Ipswich Catholic community and I'm a Franciscan friar and I welcome you into this magnificent Church of St. Mary's. This is a time for us to rejoice, to celebrate the life of Ralph who is so dear and beloved to, to us as, uh, as family and as friends. I, on behalf of the parish I extend my, my prayerful support and sympathy to uh, Ralph's uh, brothers Dennis, Brian, Michael, and Robert, to his mum Lynn. We remember Raphael, his father, who is deceased. And we pray especially that each one of us may accept God's will, that each one of us may 
may fill the void that uh, Ralph's passing uh, uh, has given for us. It's hard to uh, put words into uh, 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 the life of someone who is so young as Ralph, but uh, we do so with faith in our minds and also with uh, God with us. So we begin as we usually do, the Christian community, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be with you. My friends, as we gather to celebrate Ralph's life, we pray and uh, offer to God our love and support to his family and friends at this time of grief. Begin now by sprinkling Ralph's uh, coffin with holy water. The holy water reminds us of his own baptism and that each one of us are called to be people of faith to remind us that it's uh, times like this that we rely on our faith in a big way. In the waters of baptism, Ralph died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. The hand of God shall hold you of God enfold you, the love that dreamed and formed you still surrounds you here today. The light of God beside you, above, beneath, inside you. Shines to guide you home to the loving hand of God. You may notice the white piece of material over Ralph's coffin. It's called a pall, and pall is a Latin word which means covering. So we extend now that covering, and I invite Dennis and Brian to extend the cloth to remind us of the love that Ralph gave so freely in his life to each one of us, but also the love that God surrounds us at this time. Thank you. And I invite you to be seated now, and Robert and Michael will lead us in uh, words of remembrance. Thanks. Good morning. For those who don't know me, my name is Rob and I'm Ralph's younger brother. I want to ex begin by expressing my deepest gratitude to each of you for being here today, both in person and online. Knowing that Ralph was so loved brings immense comfort to our family during this difficult time. Your words, thoughts and prayers are a pillar of strength for us and for that I thank you. Although Ralph and I were only two years apart, we grew up in different countries, worlds apart. This gave us a unique relationship, especially considering when we met, we initially spoke different languages. The second, the two things distinctly stand out about Ralph from back then. First was his adoration of Michael, which has always been evident. The second was his unmistakable confidence. He often joked that he was so irresistible that Every woman was keen on him, apparently even if they weren't aware of his presence. This self-assuredness really stuck with Ralph and, if anything, was amplified with age. Over the years, Ralph came a long way. He nurtured a dream instilled in him by his dad to live in Australia and carve out a life for himself, which he pursued with unwavering determination. 
Starting from humble beginnings, he worked tirelessly and eventually built the house of his dreams, a feat he was justifiably proud of. Throughout this time, he lived his life to the fullest, doing what made him happy, living a life his younger self could only have dreamed of when he first came to Australia. Ralph's passion for life didn't stop at building a home. It extended to every corner of the globe. He worked hard, but he also knew the value of living fully. His ventures took him across the world where he made friends in every place he visited, embracing every new culture and experience with open arms. He loved partying and sightseeing. He was always keen to explore the next destination. Wherever he went, whether it was for business or pleasure, he had the ability to connect with people. Friends became like family, their children like his own nieces and nephews. This ability to forge deep and meaningful connections was one of Ralph's most remarkable traits. <laughs> he wasn't just a friend, he was a cherished member. of every circle he entered, leaving a lasting impact on those he met. Cancer in a short span took my brother from the prime of his life to a place beyond our reach. Walls, words fall short describing his last few months, yet throughout it all, Ralph's spirit remained unbreakable, consistently looked for silver linings in every cloud and found blessings in everything life threw at him. Regardless of what the doctors said, Ralph refused to roll over and accept his prognosis, fighting his battle every step of the way, and how hard he fought, never giving up. During his treatment, Ralph grew incredibly attached to the word prolific. For him, it symbolized not just productivity, but also having a significant impact and influence. It represented his desire to leave a lasting legacy, to make the most of every moment, and to contribute meaningfully, meaningfully to the world. In the face of adversity, he didn't just soldier through his treatments, he sought ways to change people's lives for the better. He looked for deeper meaning in life and developed an appreciation for things that many take for granted. He embodied the idea that in challenges we should seek opportunities. He taught us that the trials that we often complain about are for some wishes unfulfilled. The challenges we face and sometimes take for granted are actually opportunities or experiences that others might long for but never get to have. Ralph's life and his battle against cancer reminds us to appreciate the simple joys, the quiet moments with family, a laughter shared with friends. While others saw rain as a nuisance, he found solace, describing it as calming and peaceful. He enjoyed simple things like the warmth of the sun on his skin, and in every setback he didn't complain, he just saw it as a chance for growth and more time to cherish. Our spirit and his fight against cancer are profound reminders to us all to live fully, love deeply, and find gratitude in every experience that life offers. Enjoy the little things and remember that every day is a blessing. As his brother, I feel privileged to have shared in his journey. That's not no Ralph's memory. By living life as he did with courage, love and a prolific spirit. Thank you again for everyone for being here and for being part of Ralph's remarkable journey. Thank you, Robert. And now Michael will lead us. I'd like to thank everyone who have gathered here today to celebrate Ralph's prolific and colorful life. I'd also like to thank all those 
who cannot make it and the ones who are participating online. Ralph's life on Earth, although cut short, has been very colorful, wild, filled with precious and fun memories that he can take with him on his journey to the next life. I'm sure him and my dad are having a beer or two, right? right now, sharing all his achievements, travel stories, and just enjoying each other's company along with all of our other relatives who have passed. Ralph lived his younger years in the Philippines where he was very well loved and spoiled by my family and friends. Although I wasn't there with him most of his teenage years, I can say that he always enjoyed the company of friends, partying, sharing his achievements and frustrations. He formed a strong board with most of his friends where he enjoyed partying and just enjoying his teenage life. I can remember talking to my dad on the phone and telling me that Ralph is always going home early in the morning after partying all night and climbing the fence sneakily and trying to be discreet, calling his cousins who is in cahoots with him to let him in. He had a challenging teenage life as most of us were here in Australia and were not present if he needed to chat or needed advice in general. However, he was very looked after by my dad, my brother Brian, my auntie Alice, uncle Minyong, and his cousins Christine, Mark, and Jika, who treated him as their own little brother. He then moved to Australia on the latter part of his teenage years, where he learned to be mature and realized how to live the Australian way. When we meet up, he always makes time for me and include me, even if he has plans of going out with his friends. I always felt like he was very proud to introduce me to his friends and happy to tag me along to all his shenanigans, which always end up being a memorable one. We always had a great time. He, always, he was always been a very active person and can't keep still always wants to squeeze as much fun as he can in one day without hesitation. The Ralph that I know is a happy-go-lucky kind of guy where he always does things without regret and have an attitude where whatever happens, happens. Be in the moment, enjoy every second, and truly live and enjoy your life. Happy and thankful for all the opportunity you get and never look back. He once said, tomorrow's not a promise. So... Keep dancing and keep living. And that's how he lived his life. As most of you have witnessed, Ralph has always been a goer, always had a go at anything. If it's possible, he'll have a go at it. Most of you know my brother as Ralph, Ralphie, Rap Rap. No matter what you call him, to me, he's a warrior who I truly admire. Throughout his battle with cancer, he never wasted on any opportunity to get out there and get on with life. I can remember when he was doing his treatment, he always trying to be positive and having a good chat with all the nurses and just having a quite casual conversation with them as if he's just sitting on a cafe or something. He would then unwind and spend most of his time at the beach whilst enjoying his favorite coffee and sweet sweets. I can still picture him munching on it and saying, mmm, that's so good, yum. He has always been a sweet tooth and enjoyed all the good things in life. He still enjoyed the things that made him happy down to his last breath. During the last week of his life, he still managed to push himself to visit the Gold Coast even if his feet were very swollen and hardly got any energy to push ahead. He has set an example that we should always see the positive side in life, no matter how hard things get, and being appreciative and saying thank you to all the people who has helped you along the way. He made me realize how precious life is 
and how you must enjoy life right now and always be appreciative of what you have. I'm very lucky to have him as a brother and very proud of all his achievements. I know he's looking down on us, smiling, saying, don't be sad, remember me by continuing my legacy, by being prolific in anything that you do and always show gratitude. I would like to thank everyone who has been there for Ralph, regardless of whether you shared a lot of time with him or not. You all form part of his life and he truly appreciate all those moments and all your contributions, whatever that may be, as he wouldn't be the Ralph that he, wa he was without each and every one of you. To my brother, Ralph, Ralphie, Rap Rap, I will show you miss you, bro. I know you're in a better place right now and no more pain, bro. Just full of everlasting love, which you truly deserve. I love you, bro. Thank you, Michael, for those uh, heartfelt words. Now I invite you to uh, watch the screens and the family's put together some slides for us to uh, enjoy and um, uh, stir our memories.
Thank you for allowing us uh, the privilege of seeing those photos and stirring the memories. And so we pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son Jesus died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this celebration of Ralph's life, he who has fallen asleep in Christ may rejoice to rise again through him. And we make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, our God, forever and ever. Amen. So we've listened to those uh, beautiful eulogies. Now we turn to the sacred scriptures and see how the scriptures can uh, console us and comfort us. So I invite Maria to come forward and lead us in the first reading. Thanks. First reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. I want you to be happy. Always happy in the Lord. I repeat, what I want is your happiness. Let your tolerance be evident to everyone. The Lord is very near. There is no need to worry. But if there's anything you need, pray for it. Asking God for it with prayer and thanksgiving. And that peace of God, which is so much greater than we can understand, will guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Finally, friends, fill your minds with everything that is true, everything that is noble, everything that is good and pure, everything we love and honor, and everything that can be thought virtuous or worthy of praise. Then the God of peace will be with you the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, be to God. God. Thank you, Maria. I invite you now to join in the singing of the Lord is my shepherd. Oh, oh. 
Please stand to welcome the Gospel Acclamation. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house and if there were not, I should have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me so that where I am, you may be as well. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas, one of Jesus' disciples, said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. If you'd like to be seated, thanks. Robert and uh, Michael, those eulogies were brilliant. Gave us a, a great glimpse uh, uh, into your brother and uh, it's very obvious the, the bond that uh, each of you have together and it certainly came across in those photos. and. Uh, as I said earlier, I uh, thank you for allowing us the privilege of sharing in uh, those uh, photos because they're very uh, precious and sacred. Robert, you said Ralph was a confident man, had a great passion for life and ability to include people and accept them. Wonderful, wonderful attributes of a man uh, who lies before us, a man who suffered so much and endured so much. And in all of that, suffering and endurance, he was able to see the goodness around him. St. Francis, who I follow very closely, St. Francis says that when we see good and recognize good in one another, we see God. We often don't name that as God, but that's why it's so important for us as Christians to recognize the goodness that is around us. And Ralph was able to do that. Not all people can. First uh, thoughts often people have are negative thoughts. And I'm sure he had his negative times, but most of all, there are times which are positive and you only got to see the, uh, the photos uh, of, of Ralph and you can see the happiness that he uh, uh, shared with so many, so many of us. So my um, sense of the, when I heard Maria read that first reading, um, where um, St. Paul says to the people of Philippi, I want you to be happy. In many ways, Ralph could have written those words. He wanted happiness for, for, uh, to be shared amongst all peoples. And that's really one of the things that we celebrate today is his joy, his happiness, and Ralph's witness of life. Accepting the joys and accepting the hardships and being able to have that ability to endure the, the goodness that's around him. And my friends, if we can do nothing else in our lives but do that, then our lives will be worthy of celebration as well. We, then we hear in the Gospel reading, Jesus says to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. And of course today, our hearts are stirred with mixed emotions. And those emotions uh, call us at times even to feel empty because of Ralph's passing. 
to be uh, frustrated and maybe even angry at a young man called by God at this time. But he had a purpose, and that purpose is very evident to me today as I uh, sit here and listen to uh, Robert and Michael shared in those photos and listen to various stories over the last few days of Ralph, that uh, it, it, the bond that you, the four of you had as brothers is certainly a bond that uh, will be treasured for forever in your lives. What we do need is to do what uh, Ralph did, each and every one of us, and then his life will have had an influence on us, is to appreciate what we have and make the most of that, to keep dancing and keep living our lives in the best possible way that we can. So my friends, today we do have sadness in our hearts, but we know that our faith calls us to trust God, to trust in the providence that God has for each one of us, and that we too can be called to greater faith like uh, Ralph. So we pray in thanksgiving for his life, and we pray that each one of us, whatever's happening in our lives right at this moment, in our family life or work life or relationships, uh, for those people who are watching live stream for us here in this church, we all experience challenges and we need to see in those challenges the opportunities that are before us and appreciate the best we can the life that God has given us. So eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May Ralph now rest in peace. Amen. So we continue our prayer and I invite uh, uh, Robert and Rizal to come forward and lead us in the prayers of the faithful. Thanks. God the Almighty raised his son Jesus from the dead and it is with confidence that we ask God to save all his people, living and dead. That God will receive our praise and thanksgiving for the life of Ralph Kenneth. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Ralph Kenneth seek comfort and consolation. Let us pray that God will heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord Jesus, who blesses those who mourn and are in pain, will compassionately look upon Ralph Kenneth's family and friends who gather around him today. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and, and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. May God grant them an everlasting home in Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who cared for Ralph Kenneth, especially the doctors, nurses, and staff at PA and Ipswich hospitals, that their works of service may be richly blessed. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you for leading us in those prayers, and we know that God is our shelter and our strength who listens in love to, to the voices and prayers that we make. And we make all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we move now from the scriptures and we move to the altar for the Eucharist and I invite Reuben and Charlize to bring up the gifts of bread and wine. Thank you.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Almighty God, whose Son has given himself to us as the bread of life, have mercy, we pray, upon your servant Ralph, that the offerings we make to you may be for him the source of salvation. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For it is at your summons that we come to birth, and by your will that we are governed. And when you give us the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of the resurrection. And so in the company of all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of Now the Eucharistic prayer is a long prayer of blessing over these gifts of bread and wine. You might like to stay uh, seated or those of you who feel comfortable you might like to kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the cup that was filled with wine, he gave it to his disciples and said to them, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And together in song, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Archbishop, and all the women and men who minister in the church. Remember your servant, Ralph, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with his, if the, your son in a death like his may also be one with him in the resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. stand now and we'll pray a prayer that Ralph has said many times in his life, a prayer that I'm sure he said on his way for um, different medical procedures, a prayer where we pray that God's kingdom will be made real by our lives. And so we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. This part of Mass we always pray for peace in our world. We pray for peace in parts of the world where peace is not a reality like it is here in Australia. We remember and pray for your families back home in the Philippines. We pray for all those uh, in our hearts that are with us and strengthening us. We pray that you and I may be instruments of God's love and peace. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's turn to those near us and offer them a sign of God's love and peace. Peace be with you. Peace. I'd like to be seated now as we prepare for communion. I invite those of you who would like to come to communion to come up the centre aisle and if you feel comfortable, you might like to uh, touch Ralph's coffin to draw on his strength uh, at this time. If you choose not to come to communion, you might like to come forward and receive a blessing from, uh, uh, from the, uh, for us two ministers and uh, you're welcome to do that. And uh, once again, feel very free, if you feel comfortable, to uh, draw on the support of Ralph at this time. And for Catholics, we believe that uh, the Lord is truly with us. It's an important part of our Eucharist where we know that our faith calls us to action because the Lord is with us. So behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
I'd like to say a special thank you to each of you for your presence here today to celebrate the life of Ralph and uh, to celebrate with family also. So on their behalf, I uh, extend a huge thank you to you and invite you to gather uh, at the Brothers Leagues Club to continue to share stories and uh, refreshments. And as you go in the foyer of uh, Brothers, there'll be a, um, a sign there to direct, direct you to which room uh, you'll be in. And the details are on the back of the uh, prayer booklet. So I invite you to stand now and join with me in the what's called the final prayers of commendation where we as family, as friends, commend this great man back to the God that he loved. My friends, trusting in God, we have prayed together for Ralph and now we come to our last farewell there is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see him again and enjoy his love and friendship. Although we as family and friends will disperse from this church with mixed feelings, the mercy of God will gather us together in the joy and love of God's kingdom. Therefore, in the peace and stillness of our own hearts, let us rely on the love and faith of Jesus Christ and reflect and pray for Ralph at this time. I'm going to use two symbols once again, holy water 
to remind us that each one of us can grow to a greater potential. The qualities that we've spoken of, Ralph, here today may touch and inspire you and I to be better people. And then I have the privilege, great honour, to incense him. And uh, it's a symbol from the Old Testament, so some 5,000 years old, where we reverence his uh, body, knowing that they have many gifts that he has and has shared with us through life, may be shared finally with us now. your hands, God of mercies. We commend our brother, Ralph, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with all the saints in heaven. Loving God, we thank you for Ralph, who was so dear and beloved to us. We thank you that through his life and suffering he became a person that we all loved. We pray that all that Ralph had dear will be remembered and honoured by those who come after him. We ask that his special gifts will continue to be valued by us long after his death. We pray that nothing of Ralph's life will be lost, but that his spirit will remain in our hearts and give strength to us in our times of need. We thank you, God that the life-giving spirit and presence of Ralph will go on living in our hearts, in our minds and in our lives and upon this holy ground of Mother Earth. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of heaven for your servant and help us who remain to comfort each other now with assurances of love and faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ralph, may the angels and saints lead you into heaven. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant Ralph. Do not count his deeds against him, for in his heart he desired to do your will. As his faith united him to your people on earth, 
so may your mercy join him to all the saints in heaven. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, may the God of love and peace be with each of you for whatever's happening in your family life. May God be a strength for you at this time. And may Almighty God bless us all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. My friends, in peace, let us now take our brother to his place of rest. Amen. Would you know?